women need to wake the hell up. They're delusional. I was an atheist, but once I met you, I know there is a God, and you are my God. Damn it, I'm glad you're doing this. Maybe it'll inspire other people to put their feet down and say, enough, I'm done, no. This is going to be the theme to this program. Accept me as I are, or get the F out of my house. My ex-girlfriend, she said the biggest mistake I ever made was introducing you to Tom Lackett. It was the biggest gift that she ever gave me. Anybody out there wondering, oh man, I don't know, is this going to be disruptive, life-changing? You're right, it's going to be both. But guess what? The sooner you cut out the cancer, the quicker you heal. My husband crumbled. We've been married for a couple years, been together for 10 years. Once we had kids, we stopped celebrating, you know, Valentine's and uh, came home from work and found some flowers and some stupid teddy bear thing that I'm just going to throw away. And I sent him on his way that night and spent the night with my kids because I was upset with him that he did not follow your 101. You're the father, you're the teacher, but you know what they should call you? They should make you the, how do they call Nostradamus? Oh, you're talking about being uh, like a, a predictor. Yes, man, because every prophet man has been coming through. How is this possible, man? I don't think by giving them driver's license has anything to do with immigration status. I think it would be best to have them registered. So when a, when a guy walks into the DMV, he says, my name is uh, Bin Laden, first name Osama, you would rather have him have a driver's license. That, right, that's, at least you know so you, that are all right, So you would like Osama Bin Laden to have a driver's license? See, you're just trying to... I'm asking you. Around. I'm asking you if you would like uh, Osama bin Laden to have a driver's license. I would rather have him have a driver's license than not to have right, one. And it's your belief that Barack Obama would give Osama bin Laden a driver's license? To have him registered and, and teach him how to properly drive, yes. Hello. Hey, Tom, it's Ira. How are Ira. you? I'm okay, Ira. I just want to say... I was how old are you, you, Ira? I'm uh, 48. Okay, because there's no Iras under the age of 40. There just aren't. Well, what can I tell you? Somehow that name uh, slipped out of the uh, consciousness. Yeah. Are you an accountant? No, I'm actually a designer. Okay, just check it. Hello, Tom? Yes. Oh, this is Mario. Yes. Uh, first of all, your show is the best. Um, I'm from Mexico, and uh, uh, this is pretty much like, the best show I have ever heard in my life. My English is not that good, but with your show, I learned a lot of English. Oh, so tell us some of the English phrases you learned here. Um, Tom, the beach. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, uh, pretty much just phrases like that. I just practice almost every day with your phrases, and uh, and I really love it. What I'm trying to say, if I can finish... Don't tell me how to run this class. I'm uh, I, telling you how to run it. I'm no, just giving I will you let you finish. I will here. let you finish when I am ready to let you finish, and you will okay. not tell me when to finish or when okay. to start talking. Okay. No, you will continue when I tell you you can continue. Absolutely. Okay. So, is that it? That's it. Now you can continue. <laughs> wow, that was pretty amazing. I like that. It was like my hand hitting your ass. Excuse me? Never mind. Go ahead. I'm sorry. From the back of the back lot of a movie studio in Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Holy bucket. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. I got our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio on a very 
wet day in Southern California. And, of course, uh, the Academy Awards coming up this Sunday from the Kodak Theater in Hollywood. Uh, Hollywood Boulevard is closed. The streets are a mess, not only because of the, the street closing, but we have had flash floods in Los Angeles all day today. The streets are a mess in every way you can possibly imagine. Every way. We are sitting here about two miles from the Kodak Theater where we're sitting right now. And I got to tell you that it is just, uh, just horrific out there. So, should be interesting if you are an Oscar watcher. Has anyone seen the films nominated for Best Picture? I don't even know who the Best Actor nominees are. Who is in the film business? And the real truth is, chicks and gay guys, they watch the Oscars to see what people are wearing. They're not watching to see who won the awards, because frankly, most people haven't seen those movies. That's it. Only one of them grossed over $100 million. The rest of them are movies you couldn't even name. Unless you're in the movie business. Anyway, we can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Earlier this week, we talked about why young women prefer Barack Obama to Hillary Clinton. We did an edition of Chicks on Politics, you may have heard. We did uh, a postmortem on uh, Valentine's Day. How people's Valentine's Days turned out. Uh, we talked about this woman, Amy Sutherland, the woman who once worked as an animal trainer and wants you to apply her techniques in animal training, training your husband or boyfriend. She wrote a book called What Shamu Taught Me About a Happy Marriage. Oh, my. So we uh, did talk about that. Some of the things we didn't talk about, you can talk about these as well as 1-800-5800-TOM. How about uh, Shaq's debut with the Phoenix Suns? We didn't talk about that. <laughs> I mean, uh, that was uh, a... I won't say it's an unmitigated disaster. Shaq did score double figures in that game. But is that really what the Phoenix Suns need? The uh, uh, the Lakers now, at the end of the season, they have the tiebreaker. By winning that game, it turns out that if the Phoenix Suns and the Lakers are tied on the last day of the season, the Lakers win because they've now won the season series with the Suns. Thank you, Shaq. Anyway, Dean is hiding in the other room. You notice you don't hear him shouting down the hallway now. <laughs> now, now he tells me he likes Shaq. I have to. You have no choice. He's all yours now, Dean. Shaka like a ding dong. Sons at Boston tonight. Sons at Boston tonight. Yeah, I went out. Shaq and Kevin Garnett. How's that gonna go? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Holy schmagoli. So uh, we can talk about Shaq and. Uh, of course, Paul Gasol, who is like the toast of the town right now here in Southern California. And Andrew Bynum is just a couple of weeks away now from coming back. He started jogging. Did you hear about this? Jogging in the pool. Here in L.A., unlike other NBA cities, we don't have an NFL team. And so we follow the Lakers the way people follow a novella. I mean, we follow every scrap, every crumb of information we can possibly get about the Lakers. I mean, we can't get enough. So if Andrew Bynum is jogging at the bottom of a pool, I'm all over it. Yes, yes. Anyway, all you have to do to join us here to talk about things we did talk about, things we didn't talk about, to yell, to scream, to complain, to jump up and down, anything being fair game here is just to call us at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's one 800 5800 Six six, And uh, if you can't get through on the phones, as the action continues, you can also send an email directly to me. You can send it to Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com, and you can express your intimate, innermost thoughts. If you're thinking about it, I'm reading it. Just imagine, ladies, you send me an intimate thought, and while you hear me talking on the air, I'm absorbing it. Send you one. Keep sending those shots from the shower girls, by the way. Some of those are just fantastic. I've got one right here in front of me, as a matter of fact. 
Look at that. All right, can you see the reflection here? Uh, I see the body. You see the, yeah. There you go. Right there, D. All right. That's nice, right? <laughs> yeah. How old do you think she is? Early 20s. I'll definitely smoke that, boy. Yeah. Good times. Uh-huh. Dean came in for the other room for that. That's good, right? Yeah. So, ladies, uh, just do uh, keep sending those in. We won't post them anywhere. I'm just for, just for our own edification. I want to tell you something. Nobody is happier that the Hispanic population in the United States is growing than I am. And I think I've got photographs of about 30, 35% of the entire population right here. Anyway, all you need to do is call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Elizabeth is listening to us on the online stream. She's in Little Rock, Arkansas, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Well, I got a problem. I know. <laughs> Did someone already tell you? Nobody told me anything. I just hear the pace of the conversation. Okay. Okay, you want to hear my problem? Yes. Okay. What are we drinking tonight, by the way? Uh, I'm drinking some decaf coffee. I see. I've had the flu. What is the point? If you're gonna if you're gonna drink coffee, what is the point of decaf? Well, because it's not really good for me to have very much caffeine. Then why drink coffee? Because I love coffee. But most decaf coffee tastes like crap anyway. Because you know, they have to put it through that chemical time. process to get the caffeine out. <laughs> it tastes good to me. Oof. That's what people who drink uh, you know, diet soda say to me. No, no oh, diet yeah. soda is different. I see. I won't drink diet soda. All right, darling, what is your problem? Okay. My son-in-law told me about you, so, and gave me your phone number, because him and my daughter, they live in California, so. He said that you'd be able to tell me exactly what this guy's thinking and what he's doing that I've been messing around with for five months now. So, I thought I'd give you a shot. Well, that's very white of you. Um, basically, here's the story, okay? Uh, his sister, who's, who is a hairstylist and has been doing my hair for 17 years, um... Wait, wait, wait. Whose sister? Uh, the guy that I've been seeing for five months. You know, you've been dating a guy for five months and he has a sister. Right. Okay. He's my friend. And... She hooked us up five months ago. So you knew the sister first. Right. And then she hooked you up. Right. <clears throat> but he lives with another woman in Tulsa. Okay. All right. Okay. Over the course of the five months, he's been coming down here, you know, and seeing me. And he tells me he loves me, that he misses me. He cries when he leaves. Um, I told him, I, I said, you know, after, after this had gone on for a while, I said, um, you know, uh, I've never been in this position before. And, uh, you know, his sister wanted him to move down here and... Um, you know, I, I would have liked that, too. But it became clear to me uh, at the beginning of January that that's not going to happen. And, um... What made it clear in January? Well, okay. Like, one, I, pay, I pay really close attention to what people say and how they say it. And their body language and stuff like that. Let me uh, let and, me guess. 
I'm sorry? Let me guess. What? Uh, where was he on Thanksgiving? Not with me. Right. Uh, December 24th? Not with me. December 25th? Not with me. December 31st? Not with me. January 1st? Not with me. February 14th? Uh, no. Not, uh, not with me. All right. He but but he him. but he says he but he says he loves you. Yeah. All right. Are you seeing a pattern here? Yeah. Oh yeah. Believe me, I, I thought about this. And of course, you didn't stop banging him in the meantime. No. You were just thinking about it. Yeah. How how does a man? How do they cry like that? And get all emotional, you know, and you tell them, oh, oh, you know, I'm tired of this crap. You know, I'm not going to see you anymore. You know, and then they call you the next day and they're crying so hard that they can hardly breathe. Because you're taking away the nookie, baby. You're taking it away. Huh? Because you're taking away your vagina. You're saying you're not going to have access anymore. <laughs> You're okay. laughing, but uh, that's why. Because I'm taking away the... Vagina. The vagina. What's so special about mine? You know, he's got one up there that... It's, uh, it, it, you know, it, he can do whatever he wants. We can always use another one. No matter how many we have, there's always room for one more. One... Okay. So that's why he cries... By the way, did his sister know he had a girlfriend? Yeah. So why did she hook you up with him? I have no idea. This is your friend. She's someone who I thought was my friend. She ended up being jealous of me and her brother. But did they have sex as kids or something? No. Uh, but I will tell you this. Uh, when... As kids, they did not have a good childhood, okay? There was abuse and <clears throat> emotionally and physically. I know that they, you know, they've got problems. Maybe they maybe there was something going on. That, maybe there was something going on that you don't know about. I, I, I wouldn't say it. I, I wouldn't say it was that, but... <clears throat> Why would she be jealous of that? She set it up. Because she's jealous of everybody. Mm. She's, she's jealous. She wants to be in control of everybody and everything that they do. Why do you have friends like that? She's not my friend. I see. See, see I did not know her. You know, I didn't get to know her like I have gotten to know her. Well, it seems like it seems like months. it seems like you trust people pretty easily. You trusted her. And thought she was your friend. Then you trusted the guy you're having sex with until you found out that he actually has a girlfriend. I mean, maybe you need to save more time before you jump into bed with people and trust them. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, why are you worried about it? The guy is crying because you're going to take away access to the vagina. So. You feel sorry for him, and then you give him access again. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. All right, and it's just going to keep going like this until you stop it. Well, I told him that he had until spring. Oh, stop. To decide whether he's Oh, move. stop. But I already know that you said not. that because you haven't been boned like this in ages, and that's why you you want to get as many licks in there as you can before finally uh, having to give it up. Right? Mm. Yeah, he's pretty good in bed. There we go. So that's it. I'm giving, I'm giving you till spring. I want you to bone me another 300 times. And after that, that's it. So you think I should just cut it off now? If you're serious, and this isn't just about getting boned by the guy, then you cut it off today. 
You are sending a mixed message. Here's the message you're sending. I don't care if you didn't see me when I was alone on Thanksgiving. I don't care if you didn't see me when I was alone on Christmas Eve. I don't care if you didn't see me on Christmas Day. I don't care if New Year's Eve I was all by myself. I don't care if New Year's Day I had to watch the bowl games by myself. I don't care if Valentine's Day I had to sit around with everybody saying, Elizabeth, do you have a Valentine? Where's your val- Where's your boyfriend on Valentine's Day? I don't care. I'm, I'm only like going to let you bone me for the next three months, and then we have to make a decision. You know, that's not even the worst part of it. Uh-oh. You know, I had surgery a little over two weeks ago. Who do you think wasn't here? Oh, we know who wasn't there. Because it, he had to work. Well, yeah. You know? Right. Plus, he'd have to explain to his girlfriend, who's probably his wife, he's going to have to explain to his girlfriend why he has to leave town, to go leave Tulsa and go to Little Rock. Right. How do you explain that to your girlfriend? I'm taking days off from work to go to Little Rock, Arkansas. Why are you doing that, honey? I know. I've been an idiot. So you're going to keep being an idiot because it's the best sex you've had in a long time. No, it's not just that. It's really not. Darling, then stop having sex with him. Because, you know, I mean, we there are feelings there. It's, it's not just sex. For you or him? Well, supposedly for both. Forget it. But are you now, kidding? You know, when I, I, you know, I'm sad and I've thought about all this, you know, and, and I even told him the other day on the phone. I said, you know, um, uh, you know, I was pissed off because he wasn't here. Uh, Why would you expect you know, him to be there? Why would you expect this guy to be here? He's the boyfriend of somebody else. And he has to account for his whereabouts. So he's really a dog? It's not that he's a dog. All men will have sex when they have an opportunity. You gave this guy an opportunity. I mean, if you were really serious, the minute you found out he had a girlfriend, you'd say, that's it. Call me back when you've moved out, pal. Yeah. But you were enjoying the sex, too. So you chose not to ask too many questions or make too many demands. And as you've gotten used to the sex, as you enjoy it more and more, now you want to own him more and more. Right? No, I don't want to own anybody. Yes. I don't want to own anybody. Then guess what? Then don't expect him to be there on important days or when you're in the hospital. Just I, just, I really wanted to believe, you know, that what he said was true. And all the other things. Well, know, that's and great. And all that but you wanted to believe it, but it doesn't matter what you want to believe. You have to look at the facts. I know. This I know. man lives with someone else who I would bet you is married to him. No, they're not married. You don't know that. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. They're not married. How do you know? Because uh, Tammy, uh, which is his sister... <clears throat> you know, she she t- t- ha- she told me things about him that he eventually told me himself. I'm okay. telling you, you don't know everything there is to know about him. I'll bet he has kids. Yeah, he has a daughter. There we he go. When she wants money. There we go. Okay, here's what he here's what he told me. Oh, you're killing me, Larry. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> he says, you know, he said, I I thought I found my soulmate and that everything was going to be fine. He said I was really really considering moving. You know, blah, to the rock. Blah. You know, and blah, then <laughs> blah, blah, <laughs> blah, and his daughter starts blah, calling him in one minute. Blah 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 <laughs> blah. I know. 
know. I know. All right, dear. Now we have to uh, we have to speed this up a bit. So can we uh, cut to the chase? Yeah. All right. I'm going to fast forward now. Ready? I'm ready. All right. What's the bottom line here? Uh, Corey told me that at the end of your uh, that that you usually say uh, get rid of the bitch. <laughs> dump that bitch. Yes. Huh? Yes. Are you going to dump him? Why don't, why don't we call him right now and dump it? Oh, God, no. Why not? Because he's probably sitting there uh, beside what's-her-face. What a perfect time to call. Oh, no. Come on. <laughs> I'll handle it. <laughs> Come on, what are you waiting for? I'm sorry. Oh, Jesus. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. All those guys out there that are that are knocking these broads up and, and telling them that they love them and, and all of that, you know, these girls don't love you. These girls love wallets. These girls don't want to have your baby. These girls want to have job security. It's the Tom Likas Show. the Tom Likas Show on 1-800-5800-TOM. I have been wanting that ability for so long. Have you ever been in a conversation with somebody who's taking too long to get to the point? I don't know if you have TiVo. I have TiVo at home. And one of the coolest things, you know, you get spoiled by TiVo. If I'm watching a movie and it's kind of dragging or... If Jay Leno has like kids on as guests, or <laughs> that nothing brings the Tonight Show to a screeching halt more than when Jay Leno has like kids who are scientists or some crap like that that's just going to kill fifteen minutes of the show. What's this we got here? <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> it, and you start hitting you, you start hitting the TiVo button, the fast forward button. You know, you just oh, you're getting right past this. Until you get to something that looks really good. And then I'm thinking to myself, now I'm spoiled because I watch every TV show like this. Uh, if I'm watching, sometimes there's a hockey game, and I I know I've got about, f I, I, I T-vote it, and I've got about 15 minutes before I'm going to go to sleep. I get home at like 2 a.m., and so I've got 15 minutes to watch all the highlights of the game. So essentially I watch the puck drop, and then it's like uh, like that. You know, I just want to. I just want to get to the goals. Every one of the goals, I just got to. Yeah, oh, okay. Oh, there's another one. Okay, and all right, who scored that one? Yeah, okay, and now well, let's go to the next goal here. Oh, look at that! Nice play. All right, uh, there's another one. So then, now I watch TV like this. I watch everything like this. You know, the minute I see a uh, commercial for, you know, like Target, you know, or the minute I see uh, Paul Moyer for Channel 4 News, you know, or and, and the thing is, it's addicting. And I've got to the point now in life where I'm talking to people and I'm hearing this sound in my head. Like, come on, get to the point. And you know how many times I'm sitting at this microphone? And somebody like that last caller is droning on and you just want to press the button. Come on. <laughs> what is it? What is the end of this story? I want to know. So as uh, as you listen to the show, if you happen to be a caller, this is my gentle hint to you that you're taking too goddamn long to get to the point. Now I want to live this in my real life. I don't just want it to be, you know, last night's Clipper game where they fell behind 30 points or whatever, and you just want to see, you know, how how much do they lose by. You don't want to sit and watch every single foul and every you know, the halftime show. Come on. Get to the point here. They're going to lose. How, is Sam Cassell going to foul out or will he be traded during the game? I just want to know. I just want to get to the point here. So as a caller, this is the last thing you ever want to hear, because that means I'm bored. I want to get to, I want to get to the end of your story. You know what I'm saying? Just be prepared. See, now Art's getting bored with me. He's pressing the button. 
1-800-5800 Tom is our telephone number. Ashley is listening to the online stream. She's in Amherst, New York, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? Um, I don't know. Well, I have a okay. case. You don't know? Um, no. Well, someone referred you referred me to you, and I okay. I'm actually engaged to this guy, and um, the he says that okay, he proposed to me, and yet he says he's confused. That he had to go today. He's actually in Toronto, meeting this other girl. Which he says that he has. To, he's doing a test to see if he really cares about me. And if right. Which means he's boning her, and then he's he's kind of doing like a like the Pepsi challenge. You know, see which one tastes best. Exactly. So I'm thinking that, but he's saying, you know, you know that it's a test and stuff. So um, I don't know. He's saying it's a test. It is a test. He he boned you before he left. Now he's going to bone the other girl up in Toronto. And he's going to see which one he likes better. Hmm. But that's what you get when you're 22 and you have a boyfriend. Everybody's too immature to be in this relationship. And that's how seriously relationships are taken when you're 22. Hmm. You're too young to have a boyfriend anyway. You think so? Of course. Okay. I mean, I went to Florida for a week also, and I came back. Um, I, we, I live with this guy, and all my stuff, including our pictures together, was in the middle room. And I mean, Why, he's packing to leave? No, like all my stuff are in the middle room, I guess. And I, He's packing your stuff to send you to leave? No, no, he kind of hid my stuff. I kind of assumed that he was trying to hide it. Oh, so I, he had somebody over the house while you were gone. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, that's I mean, that's what I think. And he but said, you love him. Yeah. Even though he's boning other people at your house while you're out of town. It's great. Sounds like true love to me. I don't know. I mean, what do you think about that? I think you're too immature to have a boyfriend. And the idea that you would find that acceptable is frightening. Frightening? Yes. If this is your boyfriend, and he's boning somebody else just for a test. That's, by the way, if I ever have a girlfriend again, that is going to be the best when I do a little test. Honey, I'm just doing a little test. I'm going to be gone for a couple of nights. Uh, doing a little test. I'm going to um, Rio de Janeiro to do a test. And I'll be he back. It's, it might sound stupid to other people, but this is just the way I am. This is just the way I feel that makes, right. makes me And it happy. does seem stupid to everybody except you, because you're in love. Mm -hmm. Now, one day, years from now, you'll see how stupid it is. Now, everybody else was right and you were wrong, but you can't see it now. Because you're in love. Right? Well, not anymore. So are you going to dump him or what? Yeah. You don't sound convincing to me. I mean, I do. Like you said, I do really care about this guy. I mean, I left home for this guy, you know. and You I left was, home for this guy? I left my family. Wh where is your home? L.A. You left L.A. and moved to Amherst, New York? Yeah. A suburb of Buffalo? Exactly. <laughs> you must have really been in love. Where'd you meet this guy on the internet? Uh huh. <laughs> another, another internet success story. She's a piggy piggy. You know what we need to get for the, uh, every internet success story? We gotta get that music from the eHarmony commercial. Uh huh. And we ought to play that in the background. Just the instrumental am I, parts. Am I on my, I mean, am I on air? <laughs> I said you're on the Tom Likas show. What do you think that would be? Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, I can hardly believe you're on the air either, believe me. Nobody's more surprised than I am. Okay. So, huh. So everybody can hear me. <laughs> of course everyone can hear you. Oh, okay. Are you worried about that? Why'd you call a radio show if you don't want people to hear you? No, I didn't know about this. A friend told me this 
you know, and I was just... So okay. what did you think would happen? You dial a number, and a guy says, you're on the Tom Likas show, and you thought that meant you were I, not I heard that all, on the Tom Likas show? I the, didn't know. Did you think that meant you're not on the air? Oh. Did you think it meant you were on the air? Huh? Did you, did you think that meant you were on the air or not on the air when I said you're on uh, the time I, I, I kind of thought that. I was, I was like, I thought it was like an answer machine or like a machine. You thought I was an answering answer. machine. What? You thought I was an answering machine? Pretty much. But it's okay. So you didn't think I was a live person? I, I did. Actually, I thought that. No, forget it. <laughs> so okay. So when I picked up the phone, you thought I was automated? You didn't think I was the real thing? Really? <laughs> well, anyway, so um, with my situation, um, thank you for calling. <laughs> you don't really care. What? Unbelievable. <sighs> okay, so what's what's a good way for me to get back at him? I mean, I want to pay him back. Really? Yes, really. Really? Outrageous. What? Outrageous. Tell me about I'm not your wreck. Any help from you. Tell me about your wreck. What? Outrageous. What? Really? Okay. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles, 1-800-5800-TOM. Aaron on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, hey, Tom. I just want to let you know, man, that the uh, the TiVo sound is brilliant. <laughs> That's how life should be. Oh, totally. I mean, there's there's a countless times where, in regular life, I wish I had that button to hit just to fast forward, man. Do an impre do you, Are you married, Aaron? I'm not married. You no, have a girlfriend? No. I do have a girlfriend. Yes, I do, Tom. Does she have a tendency to blather on? Uh, she not not too bad, Tom. Does she make I, demands. I wouldn't, I wouldn't push that button too many times with her, but uh, other situations I would. Oh, I would. Tell you what, every woman I talk to, it kind of goes like this. It kind of goes, you know what? We really should go out sometime. You know, we never go anywhere. All we do is come to your house and sit around. And then I think we should also like go out, you know, maybe and see some music sometime. Maybe we should go dancing. You know what I'm saying? And I think that uh, one day we should go see a movie. You know, you and I never go to the movies and you and your DVDs and your big screens and everything, but you never want to leave the house. You only want to go and, and, and like that. Absolutely. You want to just I, fast forward through all that crap. Absolutely. I salute you for it, and I love it, man. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Tom. Take Pre care. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Cheryl in on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I just wanted to call and contribute my input about the Amy Sutherland book, uh, Kick, Bitten, and Scratch. I missed your show about it. I'm sorry. I wish I would have been able to hear it. I don't think that's the title of it now. I think the title was uh, something else. Well, the book that she wrote that I know got published is called Kicked, Bitten, and Scratched. Well, she has a new book. The book is something about what, what training Shamu taught me about life and love or something like that. Well, um, I know it initially was published with the original uh, title, Kicked, Bitten, and Scratched, but uh. I believe that they decided to make it out of a movie, and that's why the title changed uh. from, from the last that I heard. I had no idea. So, yeah, she actually wrote the, the book. It was based on the um, program from Wolfhart College. The, 